Hello everyone, welcome back to Rotor Dynamics 101. Today we'll explore the steam turbine. A turbine's primary role is to convert the energy stored in steam into mechanical energy. This mechanical energy is used to drive a generator. Turbines are one of the most delicate and precise components in a power plant. To ensure safe and efficient turbine operation, it's crucial to understand its construction and how it works. In this video, we'll explore the key components of a turbine. Here's a simplified diagram of a steam turbine. It consists of a moving parts, stationary components, and a network of a pipe and valves. Let's begin with the moving parts, the shaft, and the turbine wheels. The turbine's shaft runs the length of the turbine, connecting to the generator. The turbine wheels are attached to the shaft, and they are the components interact with steam. A turbine wheel has a central hub with rotating blades, sometimes called buckets. Together, the shaft and the wheel forms the rotor. The rotor is supported by bearings and encased in a stationary housing, known as the turbine casing or cylinder. This casing houses the diaphragm, which separates different stages within the turbine. Diaphragms are round and contain fixed blades, often referred to as nozzles. The key difference between the diaphragms and turbine wheel is that diaphragms direct steam flow while turbine wheel rotate to harness the energy of that steam. As steam moves through the turbine, it flows from one set of rotating blades to the next, with diaphragms directing the flow. Diaphragms are stationary and act as a guide, directing steam into the rotating blades. Meanwhile, the wheels rotate as steam strikes the blade, transferring energy into the shaft. Each turbine stage consists of one diaphragm and one wheel, and a turbine may have high number of stages. For simplicity, let's look at a turbine with eight stages. Before the steam enters the turbine, it first passes through a two types of valves, stop valves and control valves. Stop valves, also called the throttle valves, remain fully open during normal operation. Their role is to shut off the steam supply during a shutdown or emergency situation. Control valves regulate the amount of steam flowing to the turbine, adjusting for optimal performance. These control valves help maintain proper steam flow during operation. Now let's look at how turbine rotation actually occurs. The turbine's job is to convert steam energy into mechanical energy to turn the generator. This is achieved through one of three methods, impulse, reaction, or a combination of both. High pressure steam hits the stationary blades of a diaphragm, speeding up the flow and transferring energy to the rotating blades. As the steam strikes the blade, the wheel turns and the rotation powers the turbine shaft. The reaction blades work differently. The steam speed causes the rotating blades to move. This is similar to how a rocket engine works. As hot gases exit the nozzle, they accelerate and create a reactive force that propels the rocket forward. In the turbine, the moving reaction blades work like a rocket nozzle, with the steam accelerating as it exits the blades, creating a reaction force that drives the turbine. The turbine combines impulse and reaction blades to maximize energy efficiency. The proportion of each type of blade depends on the design and purpose of the turbine. In a large turbines, the first stage is typically impulse, while the last stage is reaction, with a blend of both in between. While you may not be designing a turbine, understanding their inner working helps you operate them more effectively. We have focused on simplified turbines so far, but most large turbines are divided into sections. Each section is connected to a common shaft, 
and each has a specific pressure designation. High pressure for HP, intermediate pressure for IP, and low pressure for LP. The sections work together as a single turbine, although they may be referred to individually. Some turbine design use cross-compounding, where each section is connected to a separate shaft. In this arrangement, the HP and LP section share one shaft, while the IP section has its own. Although the sections differ in size and pressure, they all follow the same basic principles of operation. By the time steam passes through all the stages, it can expand up to 150 times its original volume. In some cases, steam is extracted and sent to feed water heater to help heat the incoming feed water. This extraction process helps optimize efficiency by recycling some of the energy. Steam turbines are incredibly complex, but understanding their core components will help you to troubleshoot and maintaining them. This is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.